Here, we'll cover seven tips to boost your confidence, leveraging my own experiences from five years of Extreme Trials, Criterion and Savage Raids. Going from painfully frightened to join any group, to confidently jumping into Savage Fights on release. Straight to the list, in no particular order. 7. There are four UI element changes which I strongly recommend for raiding. Firstly, Boss Cast Bar. Within the hood, go to the Target Bar settings and you can tick Display Target Info independently. This enables you to enlarge the Progress Bar and put it front and centre to never miss a boss cast. Second, in the same fashion, status effects can be split into three groups. This enables you to enlarge and position enfeeblements in your eye line. This is essentially debuffs on you, which you frequently have to track and respond to in higher end content. Next, in the character config, display name settings and general tab, I find it extremely useful for mechanics where you need to identify certain other players to have display class icons with nameplate and apply role colors according to name. Lastly on UI, when in a raid, I recommend tilting your camera to get a much better view of the boss and the arena. To be clear, this is different to just moving your camera up and down, instead changing the position of your character in relation to the centre of the screen. I've bizarrely been accused of using add-ons on multiple occasions for this, but it's not an add-on. Instead, on PC, just hold control while pressing the up-down arrow keys. Or on PlayStation, Go to the Character Config, Control Settings and General tab and adjust the third person angle slider. 6. Jobs to pick The unhelpful, pedantic answer is the one you are most comfortable on. But, if you are new and looking to pick a job and want the easiest entry point into raiding, I strongly recommend Summoner, or failing that, a range fizz. Range DPS give you the luxury of moving away from the boss to pre-position for mechanics early, which we'll cover more later, and the jobs mentioned also have zero or very little cast times, giving you very free movement as you pew pew the boss. Summoner is also especially simple. I love it and it is why I've main enjoyed Endwalker as it allows me to apply virtually all of my brain power to understanding and executing boss mechanics rather than working on my job rotation. 5. The slowing of time phenomenon I don't think this is just me right. Upon first encountering a new mechanic, it's a lot to take in. Two, three, four elements all seem to go off in lightning fashion and it seems impossible to conceive of getting through them all. But within a short time, as confidence grows, that series of mechanics seem to dramatically slow down to the point where you are patiently waiting between each. Aside from just practice, I strongly recommend A. Breaking the mechanic down into the order which they will go off, and B. Understanding the earliest point you can decipher where to go. An example from P12S would be Super Chain A, immensely overwhelming speed at first. But by getting a clear understanding of the ordering and timing of mechanics, either via guides beforehand or asking others, the mechanic will slow dramatically. Key here being identifying the purple and orange chains, which enable you to immediately know the area you will be in for each stage of the mechanic before you even position for the first. Stage 1, a stack or spread. Stage 2, a donut under the boss. And lastly, a spread. 4. Focus on mechanics first, DPS prowess later. Take fights one mechanic at a time, and while learning a mechanic, do not worry about your DPS performance. It is way more beneficial to all to ensure you focus understanding boss mechanics before splitting attention to your DPS. Now, to caveat and be clear, as I have seen this more than once amazingly, that doesn't mean you don't bother with DPS until you have mastered all the mechanics of the fight. That would be a tremendous waste of everybody's time. Rather, when you successfully get to Mechanic 2, then start properly practicing your DPS on Mechanic 1 on the way to Mechanic 2 each time, and so on. Thus, by the time you master the final mechanic, you'll already be on the ball DPS-wise for 95% of the fight. 
3. Pre-raid in prep. You can find the minimum item levels to enter a raid in the duty finder, but late in the cycle, if you're going via the party finder, then occasional glances at the PF will give you a better idea of the item level needed to get into most party finder groups. People moan at inflated item level expectations, but to be honest, if you're new to raiding and somewhat nervous, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Higher gear means more forgiving, potentially skippable mechanics, and generally an easier time all around. So you may want to delay getting involved until you've got your item level up a bit. Additionally, ensure you meld your gear with the latest materia, which is dirt cheap at this point, and ensure you have the latest food and pots. Party finder expectations pretty much mandate food being up at all times, as naturally, eight players with food will have a much easier time than eight players without. So avoid annoying the rest of the party by thinking you can get away without it. People generally know instantly, as you'll have much lower HP. Pots, on the other hand, are generally saved for when you are actually in kill groups, so don't worry about these for most of prog. 2. Resources If you're tackling via the party finder, then I strongly recommend being as prepared as possible, and to that end there are a plethora of guides on the internet with a variety of video guides for every fight on YouTube alone. Avoid getting overwhelmed by the information dump which guides offer though. Firstly, while watching a guide, think about what your role needs to do. Guides will usually cover what everybody in the party needs to do, but as an individual, many mechanics will have you only needing to perform a small part of what's being explained. So focus in on what your job slash role will need to do for each step, rather than getting overwhelmed by the whole thing. Additionally, don't try and memorise the whole fight before going in. A very steep task for anybody. Take it a couple of mechanics at a time. In prog parties, it's more than acceptable to ask for a few mins to watch a guide upon wiping to a new mechanic. Ortho, whether it's a vid, a picture on another screen, or notes on a piece of paper, great to have a mechanical diagram to glance at at a pinch. I really like the raid plans which get bounded around Party Finder for this. 1. Party Finder Naysayers Don't be put off by other people's bad experiences in the Party Finder. I don't want to invalidate anyone's individual experiences, but as with most walks of life, bad news travels faster and louder than positive news. Yet, five years in the Party Finder with tens of thousands of people has taught me the vast majority of time the Party Finder is perfectly fine. As long as you bring patience, and importantly, a realistic expectation of how quickly or slowly you'll progress, then you'll be fine. Also, for nervous newbies watching this, initial party finder groups, aka those advertised as from the start, are almost always easygoing in my experience. I really look forward to these having a blast every single time. That covers it for today. Love to hear any tips or positive stories where you first get into raiding in the comments. All done. Never underestimate your impact or my eternal gratitude if you can. Like and subscribe to complete the duty.